Good evening and welcome to the Highgate Select Board meeting for January 19th, 2023. Our first order of business is the pledge of I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all for coming. Uh, so we'll take public comments first um, for anything that is not on the agenda. Actually, we're a suit. Pardon? Or Sue? Uh, she was afraid of the weather. Ah, okay. Do I have any public comments from Zoom? Not here. <coughs> Sorry, did you catch what she said? She said none Not here. here. Okay. All right. Uh, we were waiting for Scott Mallory for a Velco project update. Uh, but I, oh, are you on, Scott? Is anybody from Velco on? Anyone from Velco? Hi, this is Shannon Blaisdell from Velco. Scott Mallory uh, uh, was supposed to be there in person uh, tonight. I imagine if he's not there, maybe it was just a little bit more slow going uh, on his way. Sure, not a problem. So we'll come back to you. Uh, Wendy. Oh my, already? Already. Yeah, might be a record. Oh, okay, um, you have two sets of minutes, January 5th and the 9th. Um, you've seen them both. There was one edit to that I did to the minutes of the 5th that I sent to all of you. Um, okay, so. Do I have a motion to accept the minutes from January 5th? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 And then Ooh. you had an emergency meeting on the 9th. Yes. With the St. Albans Police Department, uh, which was contractual. <clears throat> um, do we have a motion to accept the minutes from the 9th? So I'll make that. I'll make that motion. Okay, Vernal, I'll, I'll second. Second. all those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Um, quickly, um, don't forget to license your dogs by April 3rd. Our rabies clinic will be March 25th at the sports arena from 9 to 10 for Highgate residents, nine, uh, 10 to noon for anyone else that would like to vaccinate their pets. Um, liquor licenses, um, it's about this time of year that I present them to the select board for approval for the five businesses in town that require uh, licenses for the year. We have a new portal and a new online process, so the process is going to be very different than what we're used to. Okay. No longer requires your signatures, just a motion at a meeting, and you give me the authority to go into the system and approve them. Okay. So I will put those before you as they come in. They should be coming in shortly. Um, so you, it will still require your approval, just not your signatures. Okay. Um, town meeting, we, uh, today was the deadline uh, for warned article petitions. We did not receive any. Okay. So the warning is as you guys saw at last meeting. Um, town reports, uh, we were waiting for that four o'clock deadline today. The draft is at the printers. We should have books as early as next week. Okay. Um, we'll have them at several locations around town. There will be a PDF on the website sometime in February. If you want one mailed to you, just reach out to me. I'm happy to send you one. Uh, let's see. Consent of candidate forms to get your name on the ballot. Those are due January 30th by 5 p.m. with a minimum of 25 registered voter signatures. <coughs> I have some already. That's good. Um, but once I have that deadline passes, I can order ballots. Yeah. for town meeting. Uh, we're going to be back on the floor this year. Town meeting day, March 7th. Floor meetings at 9. Polls will be open at the school from 7 to 7. We'll have three ballots this year. Our elected official ballots, 
the Northwest Solid Waste District bond vote ballot and the Mississippi Valley School District ballot. Town budgets and public questions are on the floor. Absentee ballots I should have by the second week of February. You can order those anytime um, and I'll get those out to you. And let's see. Oh, Lisa Hango wanted me to mention there is a Franklin County Legislative Breakfast on Monday, January 23rd at the Richford Town Hall from 8 to 9.30 a.m. That's this coming Monday, the 23rd. Um, I think that's... That should do it for me. Okay. Do you happen to be Scott Mallory? I am. Good evening. Okay, so we skipped you and then uh, waited for your appearance. Okay, I had to figure out uh, to come to the back door. Oh. The front door had to <laughs> sign and it was locked. That'll do it. <laughs> so, welcome. Thank you. Do you uh, have a, a, an update for the Velco? I, I do. Uh, I had a presentation that was forwarded to you. Yes, uh, is it presume, possible that it's right here? Yeah, I could presume that you've looked through that. Um, what I would like to do is, is spend uh, just 10, 10 minutes going through highlights of that and then uh, five minutes to answer questions. Okay. Uh, try to be respectful of your time, just take only 15 minutes. So we have paper updates, but if you'd like to put it on to the screen, we are happy to let you do that. Okay. I wasn't prepared to do that, but uh, okay. I can talk through the, the paper updates simply by just referring to a particular uh, slide number in the presentation, if that's helpful. Yeah. Um, Shapes. So you're difficult to hear, but I believe you are able to share your screen and uh, allow this to be recorded. Oh, not a problem. I think <clears throat> that Wendy's trying to get you those permissions now, if you want to try it again. to however you folks would like to play this. I can speak to things in, in specific bullet points and just highlight, you know, what's what's key or, or we can go kind of uh, through selected slides if, if Shana is able to uh, share those. We got, a, we got the thumb drive, right? With the, mm -hmm. with the, the thumb yeah. drive, what do we do with it? Yeah. Throw it in the computer and open it up. <laughs> Slide shows on there. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to try this and see what happens. last introduced to you uh, the Mumbler Power Company in other words uh, came here at, back in mid-August yes. to talk about an upgrade to the Highgate substation mm -hmm. in terms of maintenance issues. Um, if you could skip to uh, slide four please. Page four is that possible? What the heck? Uh, I think I'll just in the interest of time keep going and, and then yep. we can have the slides follow in afterwards. Uh, I'm a project manager. My name is Scott Mallory. Work at Velco, and uh, Velco or Vermont Electric Power Company is uh, your state 
transmission company. Mm -hmm. uh, we are owned by the distribution utilities in the state of Vermont and manage uh, the transmission structures uh, and infrastructure within the state. The uh, reason we're here is to highlight a, uh, a line upgrade that needs to happen. Uh, this is uh, what we call the K42 line, or in other words, uh, for this project, the Franklin County line upgrade, uh, because it covers the four towns of uh, Georgia, St. Albans, Swan, and Highgate. Um, this uh, line is uh, in, you know, runs between Georgia and Highgate, and uh, as you can see on the map, um, covers about uh, 212 uh, structures. We found that the majority of those need to be replaced. The uh, majority are original build from uh, 1958. And uh, this is a major uh, path for transmission of electric power to the state of Vermont, in a sense coming from Hyde Quebec, which serves uh, approximately 20% of the state's peak load as well as various wind and solar generation in northern Vermont to the load center in central Vermont. Um, if you could move on to the uh, next slide, please. Um, this shows uh, some pictures, and the following slide shows some pictures of the uh, damage that's been done to the wooden poles over the, uh, the past number of years, decades. Um, and we need to replace these uh, from a maintenance standpoint. If you could stop, please, on uh, page eight. Um, these structures are very, uh, uh, <coughs> are fairly easy to replace kind of on their own, but the problem with this line is it's needed for reliability. Um, as it highlighted on this graphic, you can see that uh, these are the Velcro transmission lines that serve the state. There are certainly other uh, sub-transmission lines and distribution lines that serve the rest of the state. Um, but this is kind of like the backbone, in a sense, our transmission is the higher voltage <coughs> serves. Uh, very similar to the interstate system, such as if you have a, uh, a closure in the interstate, um, then with two and seven, the other you know, right. roads get really tied up and congested. Things, things uh, fall apart. So if we were to take this line out of service to replace these structures, um, and this line is uh, within the graphic here in the yellow, uh, then you can see that the remaining support to north, northern Vermont is from the green line that uh, runs uh, from uh, through Irisburg and the Northeast Kingdom heading south. And should anything happen to that line, then it creates a problem of, uh, you know, concerns, reliability concerns, uh, and inability to support the load, which is about 10% uh, of uh, 15, 10 to 15% of the Vermont peak, uh, in a sense, all of Vermont for co-ops territory. Uh, so what we're proposing to do is to minimize the outages and rebuild the structure um, in place, um, just adjacent to. So if you could flip to the next uh, page. This shows uh, kind of a, a small graphic, um, and if you could flick to the next page, that shows uh, a, a blow up of it. What we're proposing to do is, is build while keeping existing, uh, what we call H-frames or, or two pole structures intact, replace it with a uh, single pole structure, and then remove the H-frames. So uh, the reason for doing this is to keep the existing uh, double polar H-frame circuit energized, providing reliability service uh, to the state and to northern Vermont, and then fit this uh, single pole in you know, immediately adjacent to it so that when you shift those three uh, electrical phases, those three conductors that are on a horizontal basis, when you shift them to a vertical basis to allow it to fit in the existing right of way, um, that causes the poles to then be taller. So we're looking at impacts that are about uh, 29, 30 feet taller on average. And the primary reason for doing this is to fit it in the existing 150 foot easement that we have. So we're not gonna be going door to door trying to acquire new easements. We're not gonna be clear cutting new swaths of, of forested property uh, to site a new transmission line or a replacement line. We're doing this all within the existing easements that we have, the existing 100 foot, 150 foot easement. Uh, you go to the uh, next slide, please. The 
just overview the current project cost estimate is approximately $65 million. Um, we don't have uh, all of it designed at this point. We're still working through those issues. The single pole line would be made of steel, self-weathering steel. Uh, we have these uh, various places throughout the model already. And it, it uh, rusts immediately and it turns a nice brown so that it's, uh, it, it blends into the background of uh, the rest of the trees and, and forested areas. Um, this is also going to be uh, done with a, the mind of, of upscaling this project a little bit in the sense that when we replace the poles and replace the conductor, the wire that's on there, we're going to take advantage of this uh, and propose to replace it with a double bundled conductor, in a sense double the amount of electrical conductor. And this will provide uh, significant savings in terms of uh, energy losses that otherwise occur on the, the current transmission line. And that also allows for uh, not only more efficient use of the line, but frees up a, a constrained area. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of the Shiite or Sheffield Highgate interface uh, within Vermont parlance. Uh, we have, uh, there have been news articles written about this in seven days and, and different things like that. Uh, but this line upgrade with the double conductor would provide savings uh, to the Vermont ratepayers as well as the ability to add more generation, presumably renewable generation in northern Vermont, which is currently at a standstill for large projects. As you may have recalled, there was a, uh, I believe a 20 megawatt uh, solar project that was planned for Heidi that went through and they, you know, almost went through the permitting process with the Vermont Public Utility Commission, but then it withdrew that because there was not enough transmission space to get that power out of right. the northern Vermont area. Uh, so this uh, upgrade would facilitate new renewables <coughs> like that. Um, if you could flick to the next slide, please. Um, where we are in the time frame here is we're doing, a, we've been doing preliminary line design and environmental and aesthetic assessments over the last year and then uh, also engaging the public outreach. Uh, we've had four open house meetings, one in each town uh, in, back in November, um, and have also been trying to meet with the select boards uh, and town planning commissions uh, if they desire an update so that we can uh, answer questions and tell them here's what we're planning to do in a transparent manner. Um, Currently, uh, we're trying to get out and do uh, some underground surveys and soil borings that's been delayed uh, from December, and we're now trying to push that out to uh, February. Uh, the permitting process, we would get uh, information ready for our permits uh, within the first, second quarter of this year, and then we envision a, about a 12-month process for the uh, primary Vermont permit, which is the Certificate of Public Good through the Vermont Public Utility Commission as well as uh, numerous environmental permits uh, from the State Agency of Natural Resources and the Army Corps of Engineers in particular. Um, that process would be pretty much during the calendar year 2023, stretching into 2024, at which point then we plan for approximately two years of construction uh, to take out, you know, to replace and then remove the 212 structures across the 17 miles of this project. And then uh, following up in the last year of 2026 to do uh, aesthetic mitigation plantings, restore the right of way, retill soil that, that may have been compacted during construction, and things like that. Um, we do have uh, people going out uh, and meeting with specific landowners, just to make you aware, uh, acquiring uh, easements for access roads. Uh, as well as uh, easement addendums to clarify that we'd like the ability to cut danger trees that are outside of the right of way. Right. Uh, limited tree cutting where the trees within the right of way will clear during construction, uh, which is different than our current, uh, our, our typical uh, cycle of vegetation management where we selectively trim and clear uh, only what's necessary within the right of way on a, every four year basis. Uh, during construction, we will be needing to get construction equipment, heavy vehicles in the right of way, so it will be more of a complete clearing, mowing, 
of all vegetation, um, as well as select uh, trees that are outside the right of way. So we're working through uh, on the landowner by landowner basis uh, throughout the, the four towns to meet with people, make sure that they are aware, are aware of which trees we're proposing to cut before anything gets trimmed or cut, and answer any questions that they have. Um, and we were also directing people to our website, velco.com, uh, where we're going to be posting a, a frequently asked question document uh, that answers you know, many of the questions that have come up. Uh, so that's what we're doing. And uh, now I'm done and ask, uh, do you have any questions? So the first question would be, so I'm assuming that our current system will last another two years while you uh, go about this restoration. Yes, we've shored up any immediate danger, any uh, holes due to woodpeckers. We've put plenty of those, we'll replace those structures. Um, some of the structures we replaced, you know, were, were replaced in 2020, for instance. You know, we, so it's, we do not run our system to failure um, because it is the primary backbone for electric transmission in the state. Right, and how, um, how long in the future do you think that this um, update will last? I know we talk, when we talked to Velco before for the high heat substation, they said they were updating for a 20 year period. Is that the same with the, this line? <clears throat> Substations, yes, are, are, we, we try to go through and, and pool upgrades, uh, improvements to, to make sure that they make it another 20 years. Uh, for the transmission lines, it's a much more dynamic system in terms of how one line is used in conjunction with the rest of the network lines. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's somewhat difficult to, <laughs> to, to read into the tea leaves. Um, we uh, will maintain this line, of course, and we expect uh, a significantly greater lifespan on the steel poles than the wood poles. Uh, the, the wood poles you know, have reached their 60-year time frame. Um, the, the steel poles have a, a much larger time frame. Uh, we don't envision needing to replace things in the future. Um, one thing to note uh, that is a possibility is that this uh, will, uh, this single pole design will free up additional space within the right of way. Um, as we're pushing it over, you know, it won't be centered like the current structures are, it'll be off centered. And there, there is more than be space that's uh, to an advantage to for the you know others in the state of Vermont to use if there is a need. Uh, Vermont Electric Power Company currently does not have any plans or a need to use that additional space. But given the push for renewable energy, given the push for uh, uh, state goals, and not just Vermont but the other right. states in New England, uh, to to meet carbon emissions and reductions, mm -hmm. uh, there is a chance that that additional right of way could see an additional line. Uh, being proposed by some someone else or by Velcro in the in the future. I hope that answers your questions. Yeah, well, it's perfect. Gentlemen, any questions? The presentation. Oh, got nice. Just out of curiosity, how many landowners do you have to talk to? Approximately 130 landowners <laughs> that are directly within you know the right of way right. or abutting. Uh, there are, of course, more than that, that that can see it from two doors down, and we're, we're happy to meet with those people as well and, and work through any kind of concerns they may have or questions they might have. Okay. Do we have any questions uh, from our Zoom folks? I'm all set, thank you. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming to talk to us. Sure. If you uh, just make sure you have, do you have my contact information, or should I give you a card? Or I would take a card, please. Uh, or it should be at the end of the presentation as well. Um, yes, it is. Yes, okay. we have. Just so feel free to contact myself or Shana if you have any follow-up questions. Anything else comes to mind? Okay. Well, I'm sure people will be looking to see what's going on. Yep, and we, we will be planning additional public outreach meetings uh, within the four towns in, in the near future before we file before the Public Utility Commission. Okay. Make sure that everyone's aware of our, 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 our plans and has the ability to comment. All right, well, you're welcome anytime.
Thank you. Appreciate your time. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. All right. So, Heidi, are you on with us? I think that's this. I think that is us here because I'm logged as on as her with her credentials. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So she is not here. She is not. Okay. All right. So that being the case. All right, we have documents to sign for the FEMA home buyout on the Meishi Road. Um, <clears throat> has everyone had a chance to look at those? Okay. Do we have a motion to sign? So moved. I'll second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Skip around a little bit. Uh, has everyone had a chance to look at the check warrants? Yep. Uh, can I have a motion to sign? I'll make a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. All right. Then you can start signing that one. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Okay. Aye. That way we can all be signing. <laughs> So Shelly is on vacation, that's why she is not here. But she did leave information to say that um, our tax, delinquent taxes is down to $105,000, which is fabulous. Yes, one hundred and five thousand three dollars and nine cents. Uh, she has payment plans on many of them, but she has one, four properties that are uh, listed as tax sale properties still. So that will be an up and coming tax sale if those are not. Um, addressed. So please reach out to Shelly for that. <clears throat> All right. So I am going to continue with the skipping on here. So we have a um, certificate of approved location of a salvage yard in Highgate. And this is for the property at 22 Vermont Route 78, which is the raised used cars and salvage. Has everyone had a chance to look at that? Yes. Okay. So do we have a motion to sign so this document? Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 So, if people are aware, the select board um, has to sign off on a salvage yard in town. Um, and that's a yearly process. So, that is for Vincent's. All right, we do have. The Airport Infrastructure Project Contract Amendment. Um, so the Aldridge and Elliott contract uh, would come to $543,239. We have the Northern Borders Regional Grant for $507,107. Er, $507, we have the local match of 12604 
uh, which brings us to 519 711 um, and the $23,528 gap uh, can come out of our local match. So has everyone had a chance to look at those documents? Yes. Do we have a motion to sign? I'll make the motion. Okay. I'll so second. This is to amend it uh, to include additional services to be performed by the engineer and for modifications of payment to the engineer. So all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Um, Heidi is requesting um, an additional uh, negotiate uh, an additional amendment with the Wolf Engineering for the Macy Road property. Um, she is asking for an additional $49,865.68. Um, she says that she has asked the Wolf to take the contracts back under their control. Um, she says that she does not have time to manage these subcontracts and it will lead to greater efficiency. Uh, she says we should be able to cover the cost under the Clean Water Fund allocation in the legislature. Um, what are our thoughts about that? About summing it up. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Um, I'm a little confused. We just signed a um, an amendment at the last meeting, adding additional monies, and now we're asking for even more monies. I guess I'd like an explanation. Oh, the table and what the way she gets you. I think that's a very wise decision. I would like some answers. So, are you making a motion to table, Richard? Yes. I'm okay. Do one. I have a second? I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Anyone have anything for the select board? Okay, so I can give an update on the airport infrastructure project. Um, we are going through the easement process, so um, some of these people will have um, monies paid to them for their easement uh, based on the amount of property that is required by this project. Uh, so that process is happening now. Um, we are hopeful that we are going to strike a deal with the bank that currently owns the Mill Hill property. So we are trying to remedy that situation without it costing the town um, millions of dollars. So we are hopeful that that will be a quick process, but we know that quick has not been the case with that particular property. Uh, but we have not forgotten it. We are on it. Um, is that? Uh, we did have an amended coal, which is our, uh, what, sorry, coal. CLA. C CLA, yes. <laughs> Common level of appraisal. We are at 85.18%. Uh, it was amended as of the 23rd of December. 
Um, when we reach 80%, it triggers a reappraisal of our properties. That would not be a great thing, unfortunately, or fortunately for some folks. Our appraisals were over 100%, but with COVID and the mass increase in sales price, uh, it has tripped us up a little, so it would not be unheard of to have a reappraisal next year. So hold on to your shorts, because here it comes again. Uh, unfortunately, we have no control over that. The state, state currently has 160 towns that are going to be appraised this year, um, and we may end up being next year. Um, not good news, but unfortunately, COVID got us. Uh, they are uh, looking at upgrading the port of entry at the Highgate border. Um, they're, they are doing public meetings now. One was just held recently in St. Albans. Um, if you want more information about that, we do have an address and contact. Um, Shelley has gotten our final reports from the auditors. So you each should have an auditor's report that you can review. And I think that pretty much sums it up for today. Yes. Okay. Richard, uh, you got something to say, Richard? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got a question for you when uh, town meeting. Yes. The, we're starting at 9 o'clock, right? That's so, right. So what did we, we're going to worry about the lunch, right? That's right. The last time we were on the floor, we also did not have a lunch because there's no school, school portion anymore. You know, like people will have not, people won't stay. So, so, so anyway, my, go ahead. My question is, being at 9 o'clock in the morning, should we have a coffee and donuts or something? I don't know. Did we sell them or do we? Are you volunteer? Yeah, I feel the guess. <laughs> Well, that's up to you. If you guys want us to make arrangements to have that kind of stuff, either for sale or for the taking, that's fine. Do you think that uh, the fire department would be interested in doing something? That's what I, I was going to ask them to see if they would be. Because I don't have any problem arranging it. I would just need somebody else to make it happen because I'm there at 6 in the morning. Right, and she's got her and official I duties. I can't leave. <laughs> Right. I, I could probably help this, you know, I'll ask the fire department. Yeah, yeah. And um, have, just to have Gary or Ralph or Dame or somebody communicate with me what they want to do. or Yeah. And you guys let me know. Is it for sale? And if so, what are we doing with the money? Or is it for free? <laughs> and if so, where are we getting that money? Right. That's... <laughs> You have, I mean, you have time to think about it. We've got yeah. another, you know, six Couple weeks or so. Yeah. If it's for sale, yep. we can use it to offset the appraisals. There you go. <laughs> you better sell a lot of donuts. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Uh, Mary, just because we have you here, Mary is our health officer. Do you have any fancy updates for us? I'm actually working with a few properties right now. Um, one of them has been a little difficult getting access to the property. We can do the outside no problem, but we're not getting access to the inside. Um, it is from a complaint. I have reached out to uh, David at the state because it is a septic issue. And everything that we have done, which we have visited the property, Clinton and I, seven or eight times already, we're still not catching home. Everything we are seeing is not septic related. We will be issuing her a letter on trash and other things. And I asked his opinion because it went right to the state of the complaint. Um, and he had said we were doing everything correctly. And if that person wants to continue to complain, then they can send the complaint to him and then he can investigate. But because it's an owned property, a non-rental, we have no access inside unless they allow us. And some of the others are also rubbish related that we're working on. And this spring we plan to attack a few more.
hard right now with the weather. Right. Right. Okay. Well, again, we appreciate all of you and Dick do. It's not an easy job. I know a lot of people, I get a lot of calls on the Mill Hill property and I, my hands are tied. Well, that's why I'm trying to tell you we're... Yeah, I know. And I've been telling them my hands yeah. are tied, but they don't understand it. I know. Unfortunately, government and banks, big business, move at the speed of snail. And that's a couple of the places that we've gone. That's the, the comeback they give us as well. Until you do something with them, you can't touch me. So, Actually, that's not true. No, that's what I told them. Yeah. Because that is. There is a difference. Yeah, a big difference. Yeah. So we are working on it. Okay. Anything else? Okay. All right. Uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn the regular select board meeting. Do so, I have a motion? Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Well, you want a few minutes? We, no, we should probably wait behind these here. Okay. All right. <coughs> okay. Then, Richard? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you all for coming. <laughs>